All right, in this tutorial, we're going to work on tabular data. So that we're going to expand this for tabular data, open up the README. And um, the thing about tabular data is that we want to actually use the HTML table tags because it is semantically tabular. You know, it's not, we're not using the table to, to provide a horizontal or two dimensional layout. We're using it to show collated tabular data. And it's much like a spreadsheet. And this has meaning for screen readers. So we want to make sure that we're going to use um, the tags that will give that meaning. And those tags are the table tag, the TR, which is table row tag the TD, which is table data tag, and the TH, which um, is the table header tag. And so we're going to use those four tags, and, that will, and then when a screen reader reads our data, it will be able to um, provide some extra meaning that, that in, it will know that we're talking about data, and it's something like a spreadsheet. And so um, if we look at the picture of where we're going with this, where you've got this um, tabular data, you know, this could be something out of a database or a spreadsheet of flights from Amsterdam. And we've got uh, five rows here, or five columns, and we've got seven rows of data. And we'll be using the TH tags to show headers. So we'll see that um, that the two um, is kind of, is th that all of the columns are headers, and that the first uh, the, the data in the first column also represent headers. So we want to give that, we want to make sure that's clear in our HTML. Um, and then we've done some styling with the zebra striping to make it easier to read. And we've centered the data in, in the main section of the table, but we've left aligned here. So there's a few details that we're going to be able to do with CSS, but we're also going to be doing some some new coding with the uh, HTML uh, HTML table tags. All right, well, let's start in on the instructions. Um, this kind of work can get a little messy because when you're dealing with data, it just adds a lot of, you know, stuff to your file. So you'll see that, but we're just going to work through this one step at a time. So there's going to be two sections, an HTML section, and then we've got like six items there, and then a CSS section. So let's get going with the uh, first thing, create a new, uh, create a new index.html. So I'm going to just uh, create a new file, index.html. I'm going to use my bang tab to get my content, my, get my tag tags going. And so this is tabular data and um, Let's just set that up, make sure that we're able to look at that. Looks good. There's nothing to see yet, but you know we can see tabular data up there. So the next thing that we want to do is um, create a container for our table. And this is because if you read up here, we want our table, tables are not responsive. So the tags in the table cannot be made responsive. The fact that they're two-dimensional, they're kind of a fixed, you know, kind of grid layout. They won't roll on each other. They won't wrap down. There, there's just not much you can do about that. But what you can do is take the entire table and make it horizontally scrollable so that you, if you're looking at a table, you can just kind of scroll back and forth to see the whole thing. And then we'll just let it uh, go vertically as much space as it needs. So that way this should still work in a phone. Um, and so to do that, we're just going to start by everything that we build, all our table tags are going to go inside of a container. So we'll just have that as our parent class. And then um, the next thing that we want to do, let's, let's open this to the side here. So we'll split right and we can kind of work alongside this. So we've got our container and now this is just a little uh, visual to show you how we're going to build out the structure of this table. We'll have a table tag and a caption and the caption is what gives us that, um, if you look down here at the image, 
is flights from Amsterdam. So we've got that caption and then um, we're going to do a T head, so a table header. And that's there's just like usually one table header and one table body, and the header gives us that row of header, you know, the column headers. And the TR will give us that row, and then the TH for each of the columns. And then in the T body, we're going to do one. Or we'll end up with seven rows, one for each row of data. And then the first column will be a T header, and the rest of them will be TTDs, table data. So with that, let's just grab this little chunk of code and it says make seven rows. So if we paste that in, you can see we've got one row. So a row, it's, it contains something. So there's, a, there's an opening and closing tag. We can remove that. And then let's just copy this seven times. And that's, those will be our seven rows. Four, five, six, seven. We'll format that. And they should all line up under there. And so then our data will go inside each, we'll have the, the data columns of data for each row inside each one of these. So this structure hopefully, you know, looks, you know, you should have some intuition about how this is all going to be structured in HTML. Then or we are told, uh, let's see, did we get a caption? So we have a caption tag that the caption is going to be flights from Amsterdam. So we'll just grab that and put that in there. And at this point, if we look at our, we, we, we have that, we have our flights from Amsterdam caption. And it doesn't look anything like what we want it to look like, but it, we're, we haven't got to that yet. So um, add five headers, five TH header cells in the T head. So all of the cells in the T head are in the head, in the T head are going to be TH. Um, and here it says these are the names of the columns to the destination and the duration, flight cost, and whether it's nonstop or not. So we'll grab that and I'm just going to paste that right into the header to the to the T head row. So if I format that, now if I look at this, I've got my header. And they, the browser tends to make these headers um, look kind of bold. So, um, and that can be styled differently, but that, that looks okay. Then we're going to wrap all this data in either a, T, a TH or a TD. So the TH is are going to go be the row headers, so that'll be the first column. So every first column will get a TH, and the rest of the columns will get wrapped in TDs. So let's grab all this data, and this data just uh, corresponds to these columns. So these will end up getting spread out. So oh, I think I need to do them one at a time. So for row one, we'll paste that in there, and row two and I am going to just stop the video and just do this really quickly so that you don't have to watch me copy and paste. All right so you can see I have copied these seven rows of data in here. Now you don't want to do any formatting here because you don't have any tags and this will all end up on one line but your next step is that you are going to wrap each one of these in either TH or TD. So we're going to wrap the first first one, and I'm going to just use this command line, so control for, for Windows, I'd be like control shift P for Mac, command shift P. I'm going to find the wrap, and I'm going to wrap it in a TH. So the first one gets wrapped in a TH, and then the rest of them get wrapped. And if you think of a quicker way to do this, by all means do, because um, this is sort of tedious, but um, this is what we want to end up with. Oops, so that. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and do this with the video off so that I, I can get, you know, not, not waste time. All right, so this is what I've got here is I've got each TR contains all of the columns for, each, for, the, for its row. The individual cells are tagged with a TD. 
and the first cell is tagged with a TH so that I kind of have the idea of the, the city contains the data about the flight durations and such. Um, and just like at the columns, the two contains data about all the two, the two cities and so forth. So it's kind of trying to associate data with headers. Um, and you'll see we have an, one more thing we can do to, to help with that. But uh, for now, we've, we've made it through getting the data in there and tagged as data. Um, now we add the scope attribute. So this is where we really can associate um, headers and data. So we're going to add the scope equals call to all the th tags um, that are in the t head. Because we're saying, OK, these are associated with column data. And then we will use the scope equals row with all the ths that are in the rows. So, and this again is an accessibility feature, um, but it, um, it is definitely something that is worth doing. I think it does in most browsers provide some default styling as well. So let's take a look at what we've got now. Yeah, so you can see that headers and get this um, bold look to them. Um, so it still doesn't look like what we want, but we've got the, the structure and the data in there. So the data and the content are in there. And now we're ready to start styling it with some CSS. All right, so CSS, um, we need to add a style sheet. So let's come over to our tabular data and add a folder for CSS and a file for style.css. And um, we need to attach that to our HTML. So make rel equals style sheet href equals CSS style. All right, so now when we start adding style to this style sheet, it should be reflected on our page. So tables are not responsive. We did put, did we put a container? We do have a class container in there. So we added that container and we can style around that. And basically we just need to give it a width and let it overflow X, which means it can overflow Overflow X auto means that it will scroll for you on the X dimension. So that gives us that horizontal scrolling. So if we if we just we can just grab this container definition. And we also have a little padding um, on, um, but within this container. Uh, and again the, the zero for the top, but but on the left and right, we have a five percent, and then we gave it a width. So to get to get an to get a scroll bar, you need to provide a fixed dimension in in the a fixed a fixed size in the dimension that you want to scroll on. So say I wanted to scroll vertically, I would need to give a fixed height, but I'm going to give it seventy percent. So the next thing is we want to apply styles to to the table tag so and I'm mentioning you if you had multiple tables you might want to give them you know a class so you could be a little more specific but I'm just going to style on the tag for this exercise so I've got a, a table that uh, border collapse so that just says you know the, the default way to, sh to is would be that the browser would stick a little bit of space between, and you can experiment with that by just commenting that out, between each cell in a table. But the collapse says don't put that space there because it really can throw off your dimensions. So, um, but go ahead and take a look at that if you want. And then table layout, um, we're going to do a fixed layout and we're going to do some coloring, a background color, dark gray, and then we're going to put a border around it, like where you probably won't even see the border. And then we are going to pick a font for it, so we're using a sans serif font. Then we're, we want to style the caption, so here we probably want to make the caption look a little bit different than the text in the table. We've got a little, I'm going to take that out, I don't need that. 
and then um, we're going to have like a 2% padding, make it italic, um, make it next to the top. So the caption, you can specify where you want it in relation to the table, give it a color, and set up some text alignment. Then for the T head, um, we want to control, so the, the T, if you set a dimension on a header, it will apply to all of, it will be the dimension on the column uh, headers, it will be the size for all of the data in that column. So it's a way to set it, well, you don't have to go set it for each table cell. It basically sets it for the entire column. And um, you want these to add up to 100%. So um, we've got here 50 and 50, yeah. So, and we're doing it, and we're doing it specific. So we, we've thought about our data and how much space we want it to take up. It is relative using percentage, but we're assigning it using nth child one, two, three, four, five. So we are being very specific there. And notice we're text aligning the left column. And then we're also in the T body text aligning the data in that column. So I'm just going to take this whole thing. So we're just providing some control over that. Normally a table will tend to take up the size of the, if you, it will use the size of the content of the column, but that might not be big enough for all of the data in the column. So it's a good idea to provide some information about, you know, that covers the maximum size of the data in the column and not just the, the size of the column header. So that gives us our dimensions. And let's see the effect of that. So you can see we, we've done a little bit. We've got a little bit of a border. We've got background. We've got our caption style. And um, still, this is kind of hanging way over there. Don't necessarily want that. So we have a little more work to do. Um, we're going to set all of the data in the TDs, not the header, to text align center. So now we've moved those to the center and that gives it a little bit clearer look. And then we want to provide data cell spacing 20 pixels. So just so everything's not so cramped. So that kind of opens up the table a little bit. And people, the reason why tables got popular for layout is because you can style TDs with and give them dimension. And that's that really was the beginning of a lot of it was seemed like a great idea, you know, but it, in the end it was a lot of problems. We 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 now have other ways to give dimension with the block model, the box model. We can set block items and give them height. But um, let's see, so we could zebra stripe the rows, so that will make it easier to read. Like right now, it's all just kind of a jumble of letters and numbers. So zebra striping is really popular for this, just for readability. And that kind of opens it up a little bit, makes it a little easier for the eye to focus. Okay, so I actually, I think we've got it there. So that this is what we're after, and um, we can check it in. So get status, tabular data, all right, this looks good. One more thing we should look at before we can call it done, um, and just to make sure we're trying to get this, remember to scroll horizontally in a smaller space. So first of all, we can shrink the window. And you notice we, we lose some, we start to lose some data there. But yes, we do have a scroll bar. So I'm just using my trackpad to scroll there. And um, we could go to our responsive tools and take that down. And yes, so we, 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 we can't really turn our table into something that fits in under the dimension that we want, but we can make it scrollable. And so that is the goal here. Looks good.